Hello, my name is Jace Turner, and this presentation is about the history of the Eastside Library, which turns 50 this year. Libraries are not about books, they're about people. This quote is from LA County Public Library Director Sky Patrick, and it's one of my favorite quotes about public libraries. Libraries are more than just books, they're about the people they serve. Libraries aspire to build and engage their communities. Books don't build communities, people do. Another way to think of, of Sky Patrick's quote is that book collections don't build libraries, people do. And in the case of the Eastside Library, it's the community that rallied to support the building of this library in the Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Memorial Wing. My hope is that by the end of this short presentation, you'll get a glimpse of not only the history of the library, but a snapshot of some of the people that have contributed to the Eastside community over the years. Many of those folks are pictured here. Virtually all the material I've used for this scrapbook has come from the Santa Barbara Public Library Archive that now lives at UCSB. Nearly 40 boxes of material going as far back as the 1880s. Fortunately, the librarians before us clipped and saved these newspaper articles and library program flyers. The material that those librarians saved helped tell the story of how the Eastside Library came to be. Let's begin at the beginning. Though Eastside Library opened its doors in May 1973, the story really begins in 1967. In 1967, a county master plan for library services was published. The plan included looking at population trends in various neighborhoods around Santa Barbara and identifying where and when branch libraries should be built. It proposed that branch libraries on the north side of town and Milpas area should be built by 1970, followed by a branch on the Mesa by 1990. In April 1968, the day before Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. was assassinated, the library trustees voted to prioritize the building in the Milpas branch. Robert Hart, the Santa Barbara Public Library Director, observed that though the library's bookmobile was able to serve children in the Milpas area, their parents and other adults and seniors were not being served by the library. In a letter written to one of the vice presidents of United California Bank, Robert Hart describes the need for a public library in the Milpas area. Dear Mr. Reading, thank you very much for your efforts in assisting us to find a donor for the necessary funds to complete the Milpas Branch Library. Both Dr. Fisher and I realize that $50,000 is an enormous amount from one donor, but we appreciated the opportunity to point out our need. As you know from your own experience, the Milpas area is considered to be a multiracial community. Many of the residents are new immigrants to the United States and speak only Spanish. The enrollment at Franklin School may indicate the community makeup with 65% Spanish surnames, 22% black students, and the minority being white. We've been using the bookmobile in this area and the children come in, but the adults are seldom reached. We must continually work from the difficulty of not having a facility to successfully serve this area of our city. It was for this reason, the Board of Trustees designated the Milpas Branch Library to be the first priority. It was felt that this library branch would be a center which could be used for adult contact as well as for children. The staff, of course, would be representative of the community and have social as well as residential ties. It was intended that the library contain material relative to Chicano history and background, and also to focus upon the Black community and their cultural heritage. There's a great deal of material available in this area as well as books in Spanish, which are needed by new immigrants. An advantage of prioritizing the Milpas branch was that the city already owned property in the Franklin complex. And planning was underway for the Franklin Center to provide a host of social and recreational services for the community. The library was a perfect fit. There was just one problem finding the money to build the Milpas branch. There were many obstacles, but the Board of Library Trustees, the Library Director, the Eastside Community, and the newly formed Martin Luther King Memorial Wing Committee were not easily dismayed. Soon after the assassination of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., Catherine Belden, a librarian at Franklin School, conceived of the idea of building a memorial to Dr. Wing. 
a group led by Catherine, knowing that the Milpis branch was in the planning stages of being built, felt that adding a wing to this library would be appropriate as a memorial to Dr. King. The wing was to be used as a cultural and educational meeting place for the Eastside community. This committee was 100% community driven. In the spirit of engaging the Eastside community, local students were active on the fundraising efforts. The Memorial Wing fundraising bank account was managed by a locally owned bank on Milpas, and many of the Milpas businesses showed support for the project by donating to the campaign or, ho or hosting fundraising events. No public funds were allocated for the MLK Memorial Wing, so the campaign worked diligently over three years to raise the $50,000 needed to build the wing by seeking contributions from individuals, businesses, service organizations, the Santa Barbara Foundation, and enterprising young folks who organized bake sales, car washes, rummage sales, and the like. Three years later, the ground is finally broken. The following is from the May 10, 1972 Eastside Library groundbreaking press release. It reads, Modern groundbreaking for the Eastside Library and its Martin Luther King Jr. Memorial Wing replaced the traditional shovel ceremony yesterday afternoon as Mrs. Frederick Slavin and Christopher Nichols for the, wing, for the Memorial Wing and public library boards, and Mayor Gerald Firestone for the city of Santa Barbara, and the Reverend Leonard Wilkes for the NAACP mounted a bulldozer at the corner of Montecito and Valerio Streets, site for, for the new building. Present was a sizable crowd of those who have worked for the past three years to raise $45,000 for the wing and steer the whole project towards realization. Interested onlookers included students and teachers from neighboring Franklin School. Building a new library branch was big news, and here are three articles showing progress. Captions from the reception of the um, Eastside Library read, the new Eastside Branch Library and the Martin Luther King Memorial Wing at 1102 East Montecito Street will be dedicated tomorrow at 2.30 p.m. The public may attend both the dedication ceremony and a reception to follow from 3 to 5. The idea for a wing honoring the, the late Dr. King was conceived shortly after his death and four years of fundraising in the community earned the necessary $35,000 for building costs. The people of Santa Barbara literally paid for the wing through their contributions. Among fundraising activities was the sale of $1 bookmarks, which gave the buyer one square inch of space in the building. Miss M. Margaret Blanchard, formerly a librarian at San Marino Public Library is the branch supervisor at the new facility. Ms. Blanchard is bilingual as are three other members of the staff of six. And the next one almost open for business, the weatherman obliged with reading weather yesterday afternoon for the dedication of the new Eastside Branch Public Library and Martin Luther King Wing at 1102 East Montecito Street. Prospective patrons browse through the facility during a reception in a preview of of the regular open for business hours that begin tomorrow. One of the treasures I discovered in the library archives is this welcome pamphlet in Spanish that Peggy Blanchard and Dolores Guerrero created. Here are early photos shortly after the library opened. Um, as you walked into the library, the children's area and magazine reading area were on your left as pictured here. And to the right was the adult area and if you look, note the paintings on the wall behind the desk in the right image. Um, the library used to loan out artwork for you to hang in your home. In a letter from September 1973, Mayor David Schiffman thanked the MLK Wing Committee for their hard work and efforts toward raising the funds needed to create the Martin Luther King Jr. Memorial Wing. Mayor Schiffman wrote, I am told by the librarian that the use of the facility has been very well, has been very heavy, and that there has been warm and cordial acceptance of the wing and the library by the Eastside residents. Not only does it serve as a convenient meeting room for community service organizations, it serves as an effective complement to the program of education and recreation offered by the branch library and helps staff to attract more people to use the collections and the materials in the library. 
A most recent notable program was the film series in August for teenagers. Over 50 attended at each of the eight film programs, and Miss Blanchard, librarian of the branch, has indicated that she has seen many of the teenagers return to use the library. This is but one of many examples of the capability of the King Wing in contributing toward the betterment of our community. The following year, Eastside celebrated its first National Library Week. I love the way that this article starts off. It reads, Santa Barbara's Eastside Public Library at Montecito and, Vo and Voluntario Streets, observing its first National Library Week, exemplifies the fact that libraries are more than just books. The article goes on to praise the helpful staff, the popular programs the library is hosting, and how the Martin Luther King Wing regularly displays art by neighboring and community artists and serves as a community meeting space. I was so grateful to find these book lists and bibliographies. I am thankful that one of the librarians thought to set these aside and save up for the archive. I think they're special. There are a number of newspaper clippings about Abdul Hamid Akoni. Aside from serving as director of UCSB Center for Black Studies in the 1970s, he was a regular at Eastside Library sharing African folk stories to kids. This is part of the sad part of the presentation. Around 2.15 a.m. on the morning of May 1st, 1980, a fire at the Eastside Library was reported by a passing cab driver. By the time fire crews put out the fire, an estimated Estimated damages were around $300,000. Library services were temporarily moved to the Martin Luther King Wing, and a $3,000 award was issued for anyone capturing the arson. In a letter that I'd like to read aloud um, by Sal Guarana, who uh, was a supervisor at the Eastside Public Library, he writes to arsonist, read this editor news press please consider entering this as an open letter to an unknown arsonist as a librarian as a recent supervisor of the east side branch library and as a member of the chicano community it is especially shocked and saddened me to had to walk through the rubble and ashes following the fire at the east side branch i do not know what your motives may have been for burning the library but it grieves me and so many others who have seen the result of your work the East Side Library was built as a result of hopes and dreams of the people in the East Side. Through the efforts of many, these dreams became a reality. It meant so much to our children, to adults and to seniors. It had become a special place of enjoyment, a place that met their needs for needed library and information services. This has certainly been a tragic loss to all the community. I cannot accept that the library could not become a valuable part of your life too. It is my hope that someday you may come to realize this loss. It turned out that 16-year-old um, Henry Vasquez was arrested two weeks after the fire. Uh, the Milpa Street resident was linked by graffiti found on the scene. Out on bail the day before Henry's sentencing for the library fire, he was arrested as a suspect in an attempted robbery and battery at Pennywise Market. By that time, Henry Vasquez had been arrested 13 times with 13 convictions for burglary and battery. He served eight years for the library arson and attempted robbery at Pennywise. I love this librarian. During the three action-packed trailblazing years, Jose managed the Eastside Library. I found half a dozen articles about his contributions to the community. Jose Aponte was so dedicated to Eastside community that if you looked up his name in the phone book for the years 1987 through 1989, his address reads, Supervisor, Eastside Public Library. The following newspaper article excerpt was written about Jose's last day before moving to become director of the San Juan Capistrano Library. It captures the energy he brought to the library. This is by Martha Sadler that ran in The Independent. Last Friday, the East Side Library was hardly what you'd call a hushed environment. It was 3.30 on a Friday afternoon and children were thronging through the doors on either end of the foyer. They were ushered by daycare workers and parents into the Martin Luther King room for a Caribbean dance lesson. 
They sat cross-legged on the floor, listening rapidly to a woman with a ringing Cuban accent wearing colorful skirts and a headdress who described what the water looks like in the Caribbean, how clear it is and how many different colors of fishes there are. A few minutes later, more than 50 children were dancing along with her to a Caribbean beat while half a dozen others swarmed upon the two conga drummers, begging to play their drums and helping them along with the various rhythm instruments. The sound of the drums receded as you passed through the foyer into the main library room with the bookshelves and reading areas. But just beyond this room and beyond the sound of congas, out on the patio, a class in Aztec dance was now forming. In his glass-walled office adjacent to the library checkout desk, Jose Aponte, the man responsible for all this hubbub, was stuffing papers, posters, and numerous awards into boxes and briefcases. During his three years at the Eastside Library, Aponte transformed it from a quiet reading room into a roiling multicultural adventure. It was Aponte's last day on the job. He's accepted a position in San Juan Capistrano as head librarian of the Central Library. found these great articles about the lowrider shows that were at Eastside Library, and I really loved this quote. So the next time you see a lowrider, stop and consider what they really mean to American and California culture. Many hours of sweat went to create these objects of art. The metallic tapestry of Chicano youth, Dwayne Newton, Santa Barbara News and Review, May 13, 1982. Here's another exhibition gem discovered in the library archive. In uh, July of 2023, photographer Rod Roll was celebrated for capturing the historical images of MLKSB supporters over the past 16 years at the annual MLK Day commemoration. But back in 1985, Rod Roll helped to organize the Black Styles Black Spaces photo exhibit at the Eastside Library, which included work by Black students and graduates from Brooks Institute. There are lots of articles in the archive about Sojourner in the East Side Library Archives. Sojourner Kincaid Roll, Santa Barbara's sixth poet laureate, has engaged young poets through numerous programs, including Song of Place Poetry Project and the annual Young Writers Poetry Contest and the MLK Poetry and Essay Contest. Sojourner also produced a well-received television show, Outrageous Women, from 1988 to 1995, featuring interviews with local notables from the African-American community, such as Dr. Shirley Kennedy and Mrs. Anita Mackey, and one of the few male guests, Abdul Hamid Akoni. If there was a most valuable friend of the library award, Elvira would win for the East Side Library. Elvira and her husband moved to Santa Barbara in 1974. A section from her obituary reads, Elvira also loved her local library and believed that libraries are one of the best supports for democracy in America. She believed that knowledge should be free for all communities, all people. So she volunteered with the Friends of the Eastside Library for over three decades to support their fundraising efforts for programs unavailable through regular agency sources. Elvira's dream was to raise funds for a performance stage for children's programs in the children's patio. It never happened, but certainly not for the lack of trying. The East Side Library carries a tradition of community murals, which begins when the library opened in 1973. As far as I can tell, most, if not all, of the exterior murals have been coordinated by Santa Barbara's mural icon and internationally recognized artist, Manuel Unzueta. The most recent mural from 2013 was created under Unzueta's direction and by the hands of youth involved in the Santa Barbara Arts Alliance. Manuel Unzueta said this about the mural. It was intended for a library and to beautify the east side around the east side community center. I thought that art, patience, day to day, month to month, we could work with the kids, the parents, with the community to convince them that we can live together in peace. In 2011, the clay mural Our Home was unveiled in the children's patio. Preschoolers and children from the Storytellers Children's Center worked together with their families to produce the mural over the course of a dozen workshops held at the Eastside Library in the Homework Artwork Program. 
The after school program encouraged elementary and middle school children to do their homework by motivating them with art projects. Elvira Tafoya volunteered 10 to 15 hours a week during the program. The Eastside Library has made great strides to create a welcoming, bright environment for the community. Its most recent renovation focused on flexible open spaces to facilitate engaging with patrons one to one. Today, the library is more than just books. It offers two weekly early literacy classes, including the bustling stay and play program, one to one appointments for job and career support in SBPL Works, support accessing social services through the Community Connections program, English conversation groups, computer and internet classes, and tech coaching, a Spanish book club, a teen advisory board, and STEAM activities for school age children, and educational enrichment classes and events throughout the year for all ages. As Jessica Cadiente, Santa Barbara Public Library Director stated, libraries today are more important than ever, serving not only as centers of learning and literacy, but also as third places separate from work and home where people from all backgrounds can meet one another and build community. The East Side Library staff, some of whom have worked at the location for more than a decade are doing that work every day creating and holding space for those connections to flourish. We're proud to continue that legacy for decades to come. And that's it. Thanks for listening.